Welcome to the 311 Griffin YouTube channel. Ladies and gentlemen, I've had a request to talk about how I set up my track IR. And I'm not going to go super in depth into this because all I've ever messed with were the curves. Uh, there's some other settings you can deal with, but um, I say that I've messed with the curves and my default keys, um, which I only use center and pause. I don't use the precision in the profile. Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't use those, I just don't. Uh, so the, the reason that I do think that this is important is because by default, when you first jump into track IR, it's pretty good, but I was finding that I could only look about 120 to maybe 140 degrees behind me without really craning my neck. And that gets you a pretty decent field of view. Um, and when I was in the A10 doing ground attack only, that wasn't too bad. But then whenever I started getting into more dog fighting, I really needed to be able to look over my shoulder a little bit better. And so um, here you can see that I can look quite a bit further both directions. And uh, and so that really helps you keep track of targets. It's still a little bit weird and you may, you know, I, I need to tweak mine a bit more. Um, but anyway, we're going to talk about how to kind of set your curves up to do that and to take care of one of the worst issues that I had early on, which was every time I stopped to try to click on something in the cockpit, the um, it, I can't even like simulate it anymore, but like the, the camera would shake a little bit. Um, and that's because I didn't have any dead zones set up. The other thing I want to talk about is that... Uh, you know, this is the camera view. This is what the sensor on top of my monitor is seeing. And you can tell I'm using the hat clip. And you can also see my glasses there, sort of. Hello. Um, <laughs> whenever I angle a certain way. Uh, this is not a perfect setup because my monitor is a little bit wonky. It's angled really funny on top. Um, I have a 26-inch monitor right now that isn't really... You know, they, they don't design monitors so that you can put a track IR sensor on top. My old monitor was really flat on top. It was a 24 inch and it was, it was really, really flat and um, it was easier to position the sensor on top. But I really wish that this was kind of down here a little bit more. And you can see when I look down, it, I, it loses the sensing very quickly. When I look up, it's a little bit better. So I get, which is probably better. The only time I look down is when I'm clicking things in the cockpit when I look down like that. Um, and I have a touch screen that I use with, um, I can't remember the program all of a sudden, but uh, anyway, uh, I haven't been using it, but if I, if I have my touch screen set up to use for my cockpit views, then I don't need to look down. I can just click everything on the touch screen. But uh, looking side to side, it's pretty good. I can look further this direction to my right than I can to my left, but it's pretty good. Uh, so anyway, let's go back to this. And uh, we're going to basically, um, we'll just create a new profile. And so here we're in pitch, we can select yaw, roll, all that good stuff. So uh, you can also choose these um, templates and it'll just put some dotted lines in there to kind of show you this is how you should set it up about um, and let's put it back on dead zone real quick and so what I do is I basically and I'm not saying that this is the way the best way to do it or the only way to do it but I basically jump in and I'll just bring that center point down to zero so there's no movement at all there and then I will bring that first point to about negative three three um, they've got it a little bit short of that, but you know, you don't want it way out here. Cause then, you know, like you, you got to move a lot to get the head to move, uh, in or the camera to move, I should say. Um, and then, I don't know, you kind of have to play with these a little bit. I like to get more movement out of the head tracker than this. So I actually bump it up pretty high. I, uh, typically, and I don't, I don't make it go linear. Um, I might smooth it out a little bit, make a curve like that, but I never make mine go linear. Now your, your mileage may vary, but, um, pitch you need, in my experience, you need, 
a decent amount of pitch movement, but you don't necessarily need as much as yaw. Um, but it's it, at the same time, it's very, very similar to um, to yaw. So, and I don't, I don't know exactly how I'm setting that up compared to my yaw. I'm I'm not being super precise right now. I'm just kind of showing the general curve that I try to do. But but you'll have to play with this a little bit. And I I set mine to something like this. The numbers may be different, um, but uh, you'll have to jump in and, and set it, play the game, and, and kind of see how it works, how it uh, if you like it. Um, roll, I actually did exaggerate a little bit. Uh, these buttons are, there we go. And I think I remember setting my roll pretty high. Yeah, and you don't really necessarily want it because you don't want your head like flipping around all the time just whenever you look down. But it's also kind of handy sometimes uh, in camera views, in external camera views, to have your roll set pretty high. But I, re I really don't think that in general for flying, I don't know that you want your roll, um, your, uh, yeah. I'm having trouble thinking and doing stuff at the same time. Uh, but you don't want your roll axis to be too pronounced. Because generally speaking, you're not needing to do this. You're needing to do this. Right. Um, so one area where I actually set up quite a bit is in the strafing, basically. Moving side to side. Because I found that I wanted to lean and look around the you know the posts in or the um, canopy rails in my aircraft a little bit more and so uh now why i don't do so much there's there's some whenever you're kind of down in your cockpit and you need to like kind of hunch your shoulders down you can't see what i'm doing right now but you kind of want to hunch your shoulders down and like slide over to the side to see a switch or a button that's kind of hidden and and z whoops z i did quite a bit because I want to be able to lean in and lean back, mostly in, to kind of zoom in on my HUD when I'm doing a targeting run. I don't like using the zoom keys themselves, the uh, themselves. Um, but like if I lean in, I can see an MFD really close, or I can look at my HUD or whatever. Um, so let's go back to this D DCS one. Um, let's not save that one. And so you can see my z-axis, I do have a dead zone because I don't want to, if my head's just moving back and forth a little bit, uh, like I don't want it to be zooming in and out. But it's pretty linear and it goes it goes up. So I can zoom in pretty well just by leaning forward. Um, y, you, you can see like I've got uh, a little bit. I, I probably need to tweak this. Because you can see, like, I'm stretched up as much as I can, and that's as much movement as I get. So I might I might want to tweak that a little bit, but it works okay for me in-game. And then Z, you can see I get a decent amount of movement side to side. You can see the red line kind of kind of moving. Um, so I can get, I can lean over in my chair almost to the point where this goes nearly linear. So that's probably good. I could drag these in a little bit if I wanted because if you can't lean any further than this, then all of this part of the curve doesn't matter, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. And then roll, you know, I can roll my head over 90 degrees either direction. That one's almost almost 180. Uh, that might be a bit exaggerated. Maybe I don't need that much. And then pitch, we can get... Looky there, we can get 180 degrees. Um, and I'm... Whoa, man, we can get further. Or it tripped out. I don't know how many degrees we just rotated. So uh, down it loses track of my sensors though. So um, that's a little different. And there's my yaw settings. So yaw I think is the most important. I really do. And so that's where you'll spend your most time tweaking. Um, so anyway, I don't know if this is super, super helpful. And I could kind of show the differences in game. But it would just take a lot of time to set up uh, with kind of a more closer to default settings and then get the you know the way it looks in game and then come back and 
and change it and show the way it looks in game. I, that would probably be more beneficial, but it would just take a lot of time. And for the moment, I'm, I'm trying to make this a pretty quick video. Um, but this is all I've really messed with in Track IR. Um, there are some other settings, like I said, but this is this is all I do. And it seems to help a lot. And then, of course, you can kind of fine-tune it and tweak it a little bit and get it, get it closer. But the things, just to summarize, the things that helped me the most were the dead zones... So we need to I need to fix those. Um, I like having the dead zones so that I'm not getting a lot of movement whenever uh, whenever I'm just barely 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 moving my head. You don't want any of that. Uh, and then you can play with those curves to get more movement once you start intentionally moving your head around. And that's that's really what you're shooting for. Uh, and so with that, I'll go ahead and shut it off. Feel free to ask any questions in the comment section of the video, and I'll try to answer the best I can. There are other videos out there that uh, that go into more detail about all the settings and why they matter and all that kind of stuff, the full setup, so to speak. And uh, if you have different ways that you set your track IR up that works really well, throw those in the comments as well for people to see, and, and I think it'll help a lot of folks. Um, thanks for watching, and take care.